Redcliffe is a small town in Queensland, Australia, just a 40 minute drive from Brisbane. Legend tells of a cracked up white boy who was goaded with the sauce who used to live in the area. Uh, Lambo, we're talking about the Redcliffe in Ferelden today. You know, Dragon Age. Oh. See, that makes a fuck ton more sense. The Redcliffe we're actually going to talk about is a village located on the western shore of Lake Callanhad. As of 930 Dragon, the village has a population of 200, and being so well situated near the mountain pass to Orzammar and the Orlesian border, it is the center of foreign trade and one of the most prosperous towns in Ferelden. Its castle is the first and last line of defense for the sole land route into Ferelden, and the country has never fallen to any force that did not take Redcliffe first. Wanna know how it all came to be? Grab yourself a nice cup of tea. Or coffee. Yes, or coffee. And let us tell you all about the history of Redcliffe. Similarly to Denerim, the castle was there long before the village itself. It um, was surprisingly hard to find any decent information on Reckless early history, so unfortunately I don't have as much as I would have liked. But what I did find is that Reckless Castle has been around since the days of the Elamari clans, who in minus 2415 ancient crossed the Frostback Mountains and settled in the lands that would become known as Ferelden. In minus 1815 ancient, the Elamari tribes living near what is known today as Lake Kalanhad separated from the rest, becoming the Avar. And in minus 1415 ancient, another group of the Elamari broke away, forming the Chasen tribe. So um, what I'm getting from this is that Redcliffe Castle was built by the Elamari tribes right after they settled in Ferelden, and the village itself was later built around it. The following events would have had a significant impact on the village's history and helped shape to what it is today. So while not specifically about Redcliffe itself, I think it's important enough to talk about it in this video. Also, uh, brace yourself. Many numbers are coming. Around minus 715 ancient, the Tefinter Imperium launched several campaigns in an attempt to conquer the Elamari tribes in Ferelden, eventually succeeding and taking control of the area for a time. Despite the fact that their land was occupied by the Tefinter Imperium, the tribes continued to fight each other. For example, in the Battle of the Red Falls, of which I could find literally no information on other than it took place during the First Blight in minus 355 ancient, and that this battle marked the end of a 15 year long war between an Avar and an Elamari chieftain. And to bring this all back to Radcliffe, it is said that Radcliffe Castle was the place the Avar hillfolk came to strike at the lowlands to the east. Now, that is what it says on the Dragon Age wiki, and it doesn't give a source, but the Avar were living in the Frostback Mountains during this time period. So it would make sense that the Avar hillfolk coming to strike at the lowlands at Radcliffe Castle was the start of that 15 year long war I talked about earlier as it was the Avar chieftain that initiated it. Being weakened by the First Blight in the Civil War, the Tevinter Imperium's influence recedes in Southern Tethys in minus 184 Ancient. And in minus 165 Ancient, five years after betraying his wife Andraste, Mavrath claims much of Southern Tethys in the name of the Alamari, taking Ferelden for himself. Though, not too long after that, in minus 160 Ancient, the Alamari abandon Mavrath and Southern Thetis collapses into anarchy. Eventually, the Alamari and Ferelden fall into a long series of wars as various warlords attempt to replace Mavrath. Many years later, during the chaos of the Second Blight in 150 Divine, the Alamari forces fight to drive the Darkspawn out of their lands. And while they are weakened by their efforts despite being victorious, the Avar and the Chasen join forces and attack the Alamari, hoping to take advantage of the situation. Though after numerous battles, the Avar were driven back to the Frostback Mountains and the Chasen back to the Korkari Wilds, resulting in the Alamari being the dominant force in the Ferelden Valley, and Hafter, a legendary Alamari warrior, becoming the first Terran of the Alamari. Alright, before this turns into a History of Ferelden video, let's jump forward to a time where Redcliffe becomes a bit more relevant, shall we? In the year 480 Black, the Orlesian Empire invades the Ferelden Valley for the first time. They do so by crossing the Frostback Mountains, hoping to take advantage of Ferelden's fractured state. However, by 483 Black, the Ferelden Terrans manage to set aside their differences and together they succeed in pushing back the Orlesian Empire. The Orlesians had hoped to take the port of High Ever, but the fortress of Redcliffe holds out longer than expected 
and winter in the Frostbacks leaves many of Raleigh's forces unsupplied. And by spring, most Orlesian troops pull out or are captured. The fortress of Redcliffe has endured many sieges, and yet it was only ever successfully taken three times. The first time being by Calanhad Thern, an important figure in Ferelden's history and the first king of Ferelden. Around 542 Exalted, Calanhad and his army move across the valley in an attempt to unite Ferelden, successfully laying siege to Redcliffe Castle supposedly after becoming the new Terran of Denerim and being crowned king soon after. The exact dates and order of these events are a bit unclear, as there is conflicting information, but it is safe to assume that these events happen somewhere between 533 Exalted and 542 Exalted. Moving on, in A24 Blessed, Orlesian Emperor Reveal, commonly known as the Mad Emperor, orders the invasion of the Kingdom of Ferelden. Its current king is killed, and as the new king struggles to unite Ferelden, the Orlesians manage to conquer more and more places, including the Fortress of Redcliffe which was eventually taken by your legion nobility. Come and get us, you legion assholes. You can't get through the gate without a battering ram. <laughs> oh shit, that's a battering ram. Oh shit, oh fuck! By 844 Blessed, Orlais has fully occupied Ferelden and manages to keep it for quite a while. Around 884 Blessed, Eamon Quarren, the future Aar of Redcliffe, is born. At the age of nine, him and his younger brother Tegan are sent away with their mother to the Free Marches, so that their father can join the Rebel Queen without further endangering them. The Rebel Queen, by the way, being Moira, self-proclaimed Queen of Ferelden and Merrick's mother. However, in 896 Blessed, Moira is assassinated, and the young prince Merrick Theron takes over the leadership of the Ferelden Rebellion and together the rebels slowly start working on taking back their country. During their time, the Ferelden Rebellion fights several battles, one being the Battle of West Hill, in which half of the rebel army is killed and Merrick is believed to be dead. By the way, these events all take place in the novel The Stolen Throne and a lot more happens, but I'm skipping over a lot of details because I only want to talk about the things that are relevant for this video. Anyway, and Merrick turns out to be not dead. Word of his survival spreads quickly and the people in Redcliffe start to riot. From here, the Orlesians suffer loss after loss, and eventually Merrick and the rebels manage to take back their country and free Ferelden from the Orlesian occupation in 9-2 Dragon. That same year, Eamon returns to Redcliffe to claim his place as Arl, and when he learns that the place is still occupied by a pair of Orlesian governors, he joins the resistance in driving them away from Redcliffe. In the process, he earns the affections of Isold, daughter of one of the Orlesian governors. Isolde spent most of her life in Redcliffe and was sympathetic to the rebels' plight. Even though the feelings were not mutual, Isolde keeps helping the resistance by passing on information, and eventually the rebels are successful and Eamon claims his title as Arl of Redcliffe. Six years after reclaiming his lands and title, Eamon once again runs into Isolde on a trip to Denerim, where she now lives. The two start a relationship and Isolde moves back to Redcliffe with Eamon where they eventually get married. Moving on to a period that most of you are probably more familiar with, the events of Dragon Age Origins, and some things leading up to those events. In 910 Dragon, Alistair, bastard son of King Merrick, is born, possibly in Redcliffe Village or nearby, and he is raised by Ar Eamon in Redcliffe Castle until he is sent off to the monastery at the age of 10. 920 Dragon, Alistair is sent to the monastery and, possibly around the same time, Connor Guerin is born. 930 Dragon. Connor starts showing signs of magic. His mother is sold, being afraid of losing her son to the circle, does not tell Eamon about this and instead gets another mage to tutor Connor in secret. This mage being Jowen, an escaped blood mage from the circle. Our Eamon falls ill, Connor gets possessed, and hordes of undead attack Radcliffe Village. Alistar, this is nothing like you said it would be. So it turns out that Eamon has been poisoned by Jowen. Though the man behind it all turns out to be Loghain, who convinced Jowen that Eamon was a threat to Ferelden. Connor, being a young mage with barely any training, naively allows himself to be possessed by a desire demon in an attempt to cure his father. Under the demon's influence, Connor sends hordes of undead to attack Redcliffe village at night. Not too long after these events, our warden arrives. Can I visit one fucking place in this country with that shit going sideways? 
And from here, a lot of different things can happen depending on the choices you make. If the warden helps defend the village, most, if not all, survive the attack, depending on how well you manage to prepare. If the warden abandons the village, it'll be a ghost town, with most of its buildings completely empty apart from a scavenger in the blacksmith shop and a chantry, where the only survivor is an injured Bantigan. Later, when infiltrating Castle Radcliffe, most of the named villagers can be found as undead. Connor's fate also depends entirely on the warden's choices. The demon possessing Connor can be confronted in the fate through a special ritual, or the demon can be killed without the ritual, but that means Connor dies as well. The ritual requires either a lot of blood or a lot of lyrium. If the ritual is done with blood, a soul volunteers to be a human sacrifice and dies. If the ritual is done with lyrium, no one dies. By doing the ritual, either a mage warden or one of the other mages present enters the fate to confront the demon. I hate being in the Fade. The Fade fucking sucks. There's nothing good about- Hi. What's a demon like you doing in a Fade like this? Depending on your choices, the demon is either killed or intimidated into leaving and Connor is freed. Or a deal is made and Connor is only freed for a brief period before being possessed again later. Later in 9.30 Dragon, Eamon gets cured and Radcliffe Castle gets overrun by Darkspawn. So eventually, with the help of the Warden, Arl Eamon is cured and offers his troops to help fight against the Blight. Not too long after, numerous Darkspawn troops attack Radcliffe, and after a brief siege at the fortress's gates, the attackers are pushed back. Afterwards, the Warden and their allies gather their armies at Radcliffe Castle before marching to Denerim and putting an end to the Fifth Blight. 9.31 Dragon the Fifth Blight ends and Ferelden starts to rebuild. Tegan becomes the new Earl of Radcliffe and by 932 Dragon, he is increasingly looked at for guidance and leadership. The village continues to grow and expand, even establishing a new district east of Radcliffe Castle in the years following the Fifth Blight. In 941 Dragon, rebel mages under the leadership of Grand Enchanter Fiona are allowed to take refuge in Radcliffe by whoever rules Ferelden. However, the mages are manipulated by Thai magic and ally themselves with the Venatori. <sighs> Things seem to finally be getting back to normal. No, 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 not again. <laughs> Honey, pack the bags. <laughs> Honey, pack the fucking bags! Magister Alexius evicts Arl Tegan and his soldiers from Radcliffe Castle and takes control of the town, kicking the people out of their homes. Tegan retreats to Denerim to seek aid in reclaiming Radcliffe. Alexius turns out to be allied with Corypheus and has plans that involve going back in time to before the creation of the Breach. And the Inquisition gets involved. Again, skipping over a lot of details, but I want to stick to what's relevant for the video. Also, ugh, time travel. Again, the exact events and outcomes depend on what you choose to do. In this case, you can either choose to recruit the mages and do their quest, or choose to recruit the Templars and do their quest. If the Inquisitor chooses to recruit the mages, then, shortly after the Inquisition puts a stop to Alexis's plans, whoever rules Ferelden arrives in Radcliffe. And no, I'm not gonna go into what happens to Radcliffe in the alternate timeline because time travel hurts my head. The alternate timeline was bad, everything was fucked and everything sucked. That's all you need to know. The ruler that shows up is either King Alistair, Queen Enora, or both. And they are not happy with the mage's behavior and order them to leave Radcliffe which results into them joining the Inquisition either as allies or as conscripts. I left you all for five minutes. Later, Arl Tegan demands that the Inquisition provide reparations for Radcliffe. And if the Inquisitor does so, Tegan will later apologize for any unpleasantness that might have arisen from his last correspondence and offers an invitation to participate in a tournament to win the banner of Kalen, Kalen, I'll put the word on the screen. There you go. Tegan eventually returns and resumes his duties, though he spends more time in the Free Marches than he does in Denerim, and the people of Radcliffe complain that they might as well be governed by a portrait on the wall. If the Inquisitor chooses to recruit the Templars, the Venatori are able to boost their numbers by conscripting the rebel mages, with the aid of the unsuspecting Earl of Westhill. Alexius is killed by Corypheus for his failure to undo the events at the Conclave, and with the Red Templars being weakened by their failure to corrupt the Templars at Terranfall Redoubt, Cory chooses to use the Venatori to assault Haven. 
The Inquisitor has the option of sending the Bulls Chargers to investigate Redcliffe Castle, and depending on what they choose to do, the Chargers will either find the castle already deserted, or they will find a small group of the Winter Mages in the middle of a ritual. Either way, Redcliffe is eventually left alone, and life slowly returns back to normal. So, Redcliffe Castle, despite being three times captured, is popularly described as unassailable. There is a local saying that goes, there is iron in the hills as there is in the people, and the people are proud of their ancient role as Ferelden's protectors from incursion. I just don't understand why they call it Redcliffe. They're not even red! And that's it for the history of Redcliffe so far. I want to say thank you to my friend and fellow content creator Lambo for doing this collab with me. Lambo is also a Dragon Age content creator. He makes videos where he goes over the basics of the Dragon Age lore. So if you're new to the series and want to know what Darkspawn exactly are, or maybe you want to know what the Grey Wardens are all about, I highly recommend you give them a watch. And even if you're not new to Dragon Age, his videos are just a lot of fun to watch. So definitely check out Lambo's channel and give him a sub. He deserves it. Thanks again to Lambo and thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, let me know by liking this video. Or leave a comment and let me know what place in Thetis you want me to talk about next. That's it for now though. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you on the next one.